This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. Well, King, it's, it's been an absolutely amazing time here hanging out. And by the way, you guys, I'll uh, you know do an annotation right here. And down in the description, I'm going to share the video that we did with Rat19. It was absolutely hilarious. And you guys have been so hospitable. But I wanted to take some time for my audience to get to know you a little bit. And okay. then, then I can teach you something yeah. about reptiles. And, and, and by the way, you've been really open. I mean, you know, I know a little bit hesitant, but... Yeah. But I'm, I feel comfortable that you're here, and I want to know a little bit more about these snakes, but it's, it's, it's a bit terrifying. <laughs> it is, but the truth is, is that, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, the snakes are amazing, and I live my life for them. This, this snake's name is actually Maya, and this is what they call a blacktail uh, Cribo, which is C-R-I-B-O. Okay, and this is actually one of the species that is the largest of the North American uh, and even into Central America. Um, it, it, well, these actually range in Central America, but there's actually a, a, uh, another animal, almost like it's called an indigo snake, that is in North America. And these guys can sometimes get up to nine feet in length. Wow. And, and he, so this is kind of a, a baby awesome. then? Well, this, this is like an adult, but not a huge adult, you know? Okay. And the thing about Maya here is that I literally, and this, is, this, is, this will make you feel a little more comfortable, I take her around literally kindergartners. You know, her whole life has just been spent mm -hmm. with kids, and, and she's, she's what I would call an animal ambassador. Right? Okay, so it, I shouldn't be freaking out then. Shouldn't be freaking out, because this I've had her forever, and she has never, ever even tried to bite anybody. Okay. And uh, everything I brought today was really docile, because I wanted to make sure that you had a great experience. The last sure. thing I want to do with someone that is even a little bit apprehensive is to get them freaked out by snakes, you know? So um, so regardless, you know, you guys, the way I first heard about you guys, and then of course now I follow you on all your YouTube stuff and your crazy insanity, uh, but was gummy snakes. Right. And, and yeah. you're really notorious for the, the huge, what is it, like a seven foot gummy snake? We do, we do have a seven foot long, 26 pound gummy python, <laughs> um, which is, um, I thought massive until I saw and met Lucy, your 16 <laughs> foot long python. But yeah, actually, I've got one here. So this is the miniature version of this the, is, the, the monster. Right, this is a baby, but this now, I is. I think I could eat that one. I could never eat the seven foot In one, one sitting? I don't know, probably not, yeah. but maybe. What do you think um, Maya thinks of this? <laughs> I think that they think they're long left <laughs> yeah. uh, buddies, but. Yeah. Uh, what species do you think this is supposed to be? Because. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that is just completely an aberration. I mean, it has a little bit of Python stuff going on. It's uh -huh. got a little bit of uh, Smurf going on, maybe. I'm not understanding. But I tell you, give me one second here. Let me yeah. throw this back in the bag. I've got a snake, and I think you'll really be interested in this snake because when I think of, you know, and by the way, those are pretty cool because they actually have scales on them right. and, and everything, yeah. which is really neat. But when I think of gummy, say gummy bears, which you guys have like a huge gummy bear too, right? We do. We have a we have a five pound gummy bear and we have a twenty six pound. Also, if the gummy five bear. pound isn't enough, right? Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. When I think of gummy snakes or gummy worms, uh, I don't necessarily think of scales on them. So this is a snake that I think would be really interesting to you. Take a look at this beauty here. This is actually a scaleless. Snake. Whoa! Whoa! And it's actually a scaleless rat snake. But go ahead and f just feel that. Isn't that wild? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> okay, so how do you get a snake without scales? <laughs> so this actually, again, this is actually a Texas rat snake, and, and the original one showed up on a golf course down in Texas, and it was just an aberration in the wild, and really? um, someone caught it, and it got into a guy's uh, hand that was named Bern Bechtel originally, and it was a recessive mutation. So essentially, you were able to breed this to a normal Texas rat, get all normal looking babies that are heterozygous or carrying the gene for scaleless, okay. and then ultimately they breed the head to head or scaleless to head, and you would get either 25 or 50% off. Right. So when I breed a scaleless snake to a scaleless snake, all of the babies come out scaleless because right. it's a recessive mutation. Real scales on a snake perform the function of like defense? Armor. Exactly. Armor, so this guy's not going to do so good in the wild, no, right? It, it, there's a couple things. Ironically enough, like I said, it was found in the wild, which you would think wouldn't do well, and it seemed to be thriving. It was an adult, by the way, and a while, so it did last for at least two, three, four years in the wild, which is unusual. But a lot of these, these either paint jobs or mutations like this, these are captive animals, and, and we're breeding them 
for people in captivity. So we're not thinking like, hey, these are going to be released back in the wild. Because, right. because ideally, you know, no doubt about it, you know, nature puts scales on snakes to protect them from danger, right. you know, whether it's rocks or, or, you know, predators or whatever it might be. And this is definitely not you know, adequately right. armored for sure. Yeah. But, but in captivity, it does just as well as any other snake, which That's I think is uh, pretty amazing. And, um, just wacky, bizarre animal. What, what else you got for me? You well, me you mentioned things. aberrations, and um, I've, I've got something here. You're an animal expert. I think you are. You well, might not you. call yourself an expert. <laughs> no, we've but done, we've done have that. you ever have you ever seen something like this um, out in the wild, um, or heard it out in the wild? Actually, I think. I think my uncle at Christmas used to wear a wig, something like this, but I've never actually, it's like something like this, but no, what the, what, what, what is, well, um, so it's, that? um, well, what, what does it remind you of? Any, like, I mean, it's kind of cat-like, it's okay. kind of, you know, it's maybe a little bit of a rabbit ear, I right. don't, I, I really right. don't know. This is called the Not A Cat Cat. <laughs> not A Cat Cat, and, and who is the customer that buys a Not A Cat Cat? Um, well, people that love cats but also don't want a cat because, you know, it's not a cat. So they, they like sit on their couch and they're like, they're kind of yeah. like this? Yeah. And they just watch TV and uh -huh. they don't have to worry about feeding or cleaning the right. box. Right, exactly, because it's not a cat. Bat 19 is, is the place that you find not a cats and other crazy things. And, and tell me a little bit about that. I mean, you've been in business for how long is Bat 19? And, and guys, you've got to check these guys out. Not only do they do amazing videos on YouTube, but their product line is just ridiculous. If you want that crazy, weird thing that you just can't live without. So tell me a little bit. About, how did this whole thing come about? <laughs> um, well, um, actually, so the not a cat cat uh, was actually invented by somebody here, uh, Eric. Who you were putting snakes on in that Eric other from video. The video down Eric from the oh video um, <laughs> kind of came up with this um, crazy idea and we decided to, to, to sort of run with it and make it and did a Kickstarter and all this fun stuff. But um, we really are just more of a retailer. So we mm -hmm. find really cool products out there and make fun videos for them and, um, and try to sell them. This is about our 10th year okay. as a retailer. Now, um, did you immediately start with YouTube when you started or was that an afterthought? When we started, um, we were a video production company first, so we made kind of terrible local commercials here in St. Louis, and I wanted to get into making videos uh, that I really liked making. So we looked for some products that we thought were cool and started making videos for them, and when I found out that I could host videos for free on YouTube in like about 10 years ago, I went for that. And so oh, it's free, it's free hosting for the videos, because forever ago, we used to, have to like really pay a lot of money for that. And then the YouTube thing just kind of grew from from there. I never even thought about it as a community or a place where we could like have a channel and all these subscribers. It was just like free video hosting. I know. And now, guys, these get, you have what, 3.1, 3.2 million subscribers? Somewhere in that range. Think yeah. about that. I mean, it's so cool. And, and a lot of it is just because you, number one, are real creative. You're obviously good at video. And you have, you know, crazy. Show me something else. I mean, what else do you got okay. over here? Because these guys have. Well, Coolest I think this would be, this might be up your alley. Oh yeah, check this out guys. Woo! These are, these are gummy frogs, and they kind of look like those sort of poison dart frogs. Exactly, you know, it's um, perfect, it's funny you said, you know, tell me more about it, but I, I actually have a couple a, things what for you. Segue. What a what segue. What a segue. What a segue, this wasn't <laughs> planned at all. <laughs> no, this, I just happen to have yeah. one sitting here right down Some the of way. these are, uh, I think this one is, is sour. Oh my gosh, that kind of yeah, looks. Take a look at that. Wow, that is. Yeah, and this is again a, a poison dart frog and actually my good friends over at Josh's Frogs, if you guys uh, haven't checked them out, if you want a frog, definitely check them out because they're amazing. I'll definitely put a link down below, but uh, um, they provide me with some cool frogs to come show you. I'm going to be totally honest with you, I don't know a lot about frogs. Okay. But the one so thing I will the say... The name has poison in it though. Poison dart frog. So frog. are we in danger right now? <laughs> no, fortunately what happens is that, you know, in captivity they're pretty much completely harmless and even in the wild there are certain ones that have some poison in them but it's mainly from the food that they eat in the jungles right and then they'll excrete uh, a toxin and actually the tribes down in, in South America used to use them to actually you know roll their darts on the ends of their arrows uh, and either blow dart or arrow and uh, that's why they got the name poison dart frog or poison okay. arrow frog could be either way so so this isn't the type of frog that like 
lick the back of to get high from? No, no, okay. that is actually a Colorado River toad, and uh, they're actually illegal now because of so many people, uh, not accusing you, of course, because I know you would <laughs> I never lick a frog. I know <laughs> Eric might lick a frog. Yeah. This video is going to get I'm really seeing, weird now. It's weird. I'm seeing like snakes and, it's psychedelic. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, tarantulas everywhere. Well, I tell you what, I've got a couple other frogs that are really cool that Josh oh, wow. Frog sent me. Uh, this is actually called a milk frog. And uh, this, this has always been one of the species of frogs that I just really have loved. And, and uh, again, you know, these will spend a lot of times up in the trees. And, and um, again, they'll, they'll secrete a milky substration. That's where they ultimately get their name from. If you can yeah. hold that. Just, just uh, okay. feel that. It's okay. so bizarre. Okay. Oh, it's kind of like a gummy frog. It it's is, sticky it? like that. It's totally sticky. And then try to, like, pick it up because it'll stick on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you got some secretion on you. You got uh, some of that milky secretion I was talking mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, look at that. Look at that. That's that. That was a, that's the That's reflexes. a great catch, man. I know. Only Holy an animal cow. guy would have reflexes like that. Now, this is actually a, uh, a red spotted uh, climbing tree toad. And uh, you can see how, look at, look at how it'll climb like that, right? Look at Which his is really cool. hands, so. like the fingers and stuff. Yeah, so again, you can, gripping. you might as well, you're already, you're already dirty. You okay. might as well go for it. I just, oh. Isn't that thing cool? That is neat. And again, Josh's frogs are one of the first people to breed these guys. And they're hoping that this is like a frog, because it's so hardy and it's such an interesting frog that almost anyone can keep, they're hoping this will be like a really popular pet frog in the future. I, I've got one more frog before we move on to a couple of your things, as well as a couple snakes. And this guy is definitely a jumper. And I have a feeling that if we take this out very much, that it's going to uh, wow, end up look at somewhere the colors, in the studio. Though. I mean, its eyes are look incredible. At the, look at the underneath here, too. It's, uh -huh. it's got that blue oh, underneath. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? Yeah, that is fascinating. Whoa, Whoa. and there it goes. See you later. <laughs> so, <laughs> I better put this back. But, that's but a this, big jump. I know. These, these guys will leap. As a matter of fact, if, sometimes if you go like this, they'll actually leap from hand to hand. It's a trick frog. See that? Wow. <laughs> Can I try? Absolutely. Oh! <laughs> it's going to jump at me. Go, go. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Buddy. You can get it. Oh, I don't... Uh. <laughs> I thought it was comfortable. But these guys are, no, no, no. These guys are absolutely wow. crazy. So, uh, sorry. So what else, uh, what other animal creatures do you have for us here? Uh, I wanted to give you this gift. I think it could be great for your office. These are called attack plaques. My animal guy, it's either a crocodile or an alligator. I'm not yeah, sure yeah, which yeah. one. It's and kind you of can... a hybrid, I think. You okay. Know, more, more crocodile than alligator. I'm picking up on a crane or an egret and snapping our jaws on it. Yeah! yeah! And sometimes walking out onto a dry plain or dusty field because it's nice to get out of the swamp now and then. Yeah! yeah! Uh, wait, uh, what? 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 You know, a lot of times you'll see, and by the way, I have a pet alligator named RJ. Nice. Uh, and, uh, but most of the time what it is is that alligators will have a more rounded mouth. Okay. And crocodiles will have a more triangular shape. Okay, so mouth. this is sort Probably of... Probably crocodile in. Yeah, ish. <laughs> okay, it's crocodile. But thank you, I love this. Then. And this is, again, you know, I, I'm... You know, a lot of the audience. You wouldn't be mad if I re-gifted this, though, would you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. This is this is. I want you to take this home to your wife. I think she'll love it. Okay. What um, is it? No. No. Most of my audience. Oh, that already, looks. Yeah. Most, that that looks dangerous with the striping. It's funny you say that, and that's exactly why I brought it for you. And most of my audience will already know this type of stuff. So, um, so, so I'm I'm trying to teach you some things that they hopefully will already know. And that's of course that these are mimicry animals, right? So, okay. So pretty much all animals have defense mechanisms. You know, whatever it is, whether it's an aggression or whatever the case is. In this case, this is a mimic animal instead of a camouflage animal, because certainly these guys are from the Mexico area. It's called a okay. Sinaloa milk snake. You can, you know, if this is crawling around, it's not going to be hiding in the, the weeds, right, because right. it's red, you know? But so it does, it mimics the coral snake, which okay. is, of course, a venomous snake. Uh, and so predators come up and they think, don't mess with the Sinaloan because it's got to be deadly, right? That's clever. But uh, have you ever heard the saying, so red yeah. touches yellow is a deadly fellow, red touches black is a friend of Jack. So, so ah, as you can see, this okay. is uh, red touches black. And, and I'll be honest with you, that isn't and you're, always you're sure. You're, you're sure. <laughs> well, I tell people all the time, there are some exceptions to the rule okay. in the wild. So if you ever do come across a snake like this and you don't know what you're doing, just leave it alone. Gotcha. I mean, that's the other thing I always tell people. I feel people. like that could be a good 
always thing with snakes, though. Maybe just kind of. <laughs> Unless you're a guy like me, and then you like chase after yeah. them. But uh, and this yeah. is an adult. This is big as it gets. What do they eat? Uh, so almost all snakes. Well, all snakes are carnivores, but almost all snakes eat rodents. Now some eat fish, some eat worms, some eat other snakes, some eat lizards. But uh, the, the vast majority of at least pet snakes do eat rodents. The good news is is that we feed them frozen rodents. My freezers are a little different than probably your freezers because uh, it's not <laughs> my imagine. home freezer. I'm right. not like don't have ice cream and my beef roast and then a bunch of frozen mice. But my shop uh, at, at the shop is, is just full of frozen rodents, which is pretty. Yeah, pretty weird, I guess. A little macabre, I would say. Um, yeah, well, for what you do, it makes sense, but yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just weird. Let's just say what yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's, it's, but speaking of another really interesting snake, is um, uh, again, you know, lots of defense mechanisms, lots of uh, type of predation that goes on with different types of snakes. And this has a pretty Whoa. interesting adaptation. And this is called a rhino rat snake. And yeah, of it's got a. Got the little, it's got a horn. It's got a little horn. And of yeah. course, what these guys do is they. These are from Vietnam. And they live up in the trees, and they use that little appendage to allure in birds. You know, and the bird comes in, thinks it's like a little bit of a caterpillar oh. or a little bit of a grub. It comes in to try to eat it, and bam, that's what you do. And, and that is a cool snake. I tell you what, Jim. That and is that, awesome. And that's what I love about reptiles. I love about all animals, but reptiles in particular is these types of adaptations. You know, these 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 ways that they survive in the wild. And I always think, like, how does that happen? Like, how does a snake evolve from? you know, a snake to having this rhino horn going on, you know, it's right. like, and that's why I'm so fascinated by, by these animals and I'm so curious. Can I ask I a question about fast the fast colors? Fast. You absolutely can. So, you say it lives in the trees. Mm -hmm. So is it green on the top, so from above, it kind of blends into the trees, and then is it blue on the bottom so that Animals looking up, it kind of blends into the sky, or a why little, do you think it's blue on the way. bottom? There's no doubt about that. And again, a lot of the adaptations you get with color, colors of animals will be exactly that, so that they camouflage them from different angles. You know, there's no doubt, and, and you nailed it so well. Is that certain angles they want to be more green, certain angles they want to be more white, more bluish, uh, and so on like that. But the idea is here is that you can walk by this animal and be three feet away from it in the wild, and you're never going to see it. Or, if you're a bird, you're not going to see a snake, you're only going to see what you think is a, a little caterpillar. Right. So, th this, little, this little guy has a little, a little horn. Yeah. This is, um, I'm sure you know what this is. This is a... a narwhal? It is. It's just a little tiny it's narwhal. Just a, it's just a little baby one. When I was younger and I saw narwhals, I thought that they were fake. I did not think that that was a yeah. real animal oh, because, yeah. because they are absolutely crazy, uh, bizarre, there's no doubt about it. But uh, It doesn't have scales. It's pretty much have. fluff. Fluff. You know, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty fluff. Uh, we have a bigger one too, but um, we just brought the little one in. So yeah. if you're ever interested in a little baby Norwal, yeah, for actually, all, I have all I you have snake people, yeah. right? I figured it makes perfect sense. Snake people love mythical whale. <laughs> real creature things. I don't, I'm not really sure what the correlation is there. <laughs> not a lot. Uh, not a lot. Yeah. You know, this is almost snake-like, but it's uh, it's actually a lizard. And these guys are from Australia, although they'll range uh, up into the Indonesian area. And, and, and yeah. Stuff like that. Uh -huh. just, it's, it's very unusual, right? Because it's, it's almost like a snake. It kind of takes your breath away at first. Uh, at first, yeah, it's snake-like, but it, it, it's got arms and legs. And you see its tongue? Yes. And that's why it's, it's not... called a blue-tongued skate because his tongue is actually blue. Right, it didn't look like, forked. Yeah, it's not forked right. whatsoever, exactly. And, uh, yeah. and again, you can see these really tiny What's legs. What's this opening those there? Those are actually ears. Okay. Not, yeah, those are ear holes. And, okay. and uh, again, these guys are gonna be completely ground dwellers because you know those little short legs that can cram underneath things. The thing that's interesting about the blue tongue skinks is that from a pet standpoint, they're so super So people easy. keep this as a pet? Yeah, unbelievable. As a matter of fact, really? in Australia, if you would go into almost any pet shop and say, hey, I want my kid to have a first lizard pet, this would probably be what they would say because it's this is one. your this is your starter this is your, your star starter lizard okay <laughs> starter lizard okay. not so much here in the U S because they're not as common but uh, but they certainly are, are really amazing animals the thing that's neat is that most reptiles take a little bit of uh, a little bit of work in the sense that you need frozen rodents or you need crickets or you need mealworms right. these guys believe it or not will eat dog food really which makes it really great you know? wow um, so fat nineteen. Um, you guys do amazing videos, you have all kinds. How many products do you have? Oh, um, we probably have, a, you know, if you count up all the different colors and sizes and variations of things, maybe about 1,100. 1,100 Somewhere in that. crazy things. And, I mean, do you have anything that you would call, and, and, and this is all subjective, obviously, do you have anything that you would call a little more normal, or is everything just wild? Oh, 
We have a couple functional items, like things that actually like, um, you know, like solve a problem, but I didn't bring any of those right. with me today. I would never do that to you. So as a reptile breeder, we'll do a lot of what we call paint jobs, right? So we're kind of mixing a little bit of that and we're mixing a little bit of this and we're trying Whoa. to come up with really, and the thing that's interesting about this is that these, uh, these four snakes are the exact same snake. These are ball pythons out of West Africa and, and you have obviously a solid white one. I'll uh, let you hold uh, this. Perfect. Um, okay. And then, this and then is amazing. You have one that's almost a solid black one. I mean, it's more like a dark brown, though. And but these are exactly the same, the same species exact of snake. Animal. We're just using different mutations to produce them. And, and both of these happen to be super versions of, this, of, of a snake, right? So this would be a super version of a cinnamon pastel, oh. which means you bring two cinnamons together. And this would mm -hmm. be a super version of a lesser, which means you bring two lessers. And, and on average, one in four would come out these colors. I'm not as used to snakes as you are, so. <laughs> no, uh, you're doing really. You're I'm doing trying. Great. No, you're I'm doing absolutely. I'm sweating great. a little bit, but I'm starting to fall. I'm, I'm starting to fall in love a little bit with these snakes. See, They're that, really cool looking. The whole idea. Is They're just, really. You know, I always tell people the opposite of fear is, is education and knowledge, right? right? So the more we can teach you, the less you're going to be fearful. And I'm right. not thinking that Jamie's running out to the local pet shop buying a snake for for his. Uh, his Maybe family that thing. lizard though. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Eats the dog food. That's perfect. See, now I've learned from you this is this is an albino because it has the red orange exactly. eyes right exactly. okay yes, yes 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 so it's got those uh, yeah I mean uh, yeah I was terrified to even touch a snake until earlier this morning so <laughs> you are a great teacher and ambassador teacher. Oh, of boy, these, something like that I of no these uh, animals <laughs> and then this would be actually a combination of a couple different morphs. So we get like something that would be like a spider in a pinstrip, which are mutations, and you bring them together, and you can start layering mutations, right? And that's what we basically do is we try to layer mutations to produce different and different colors. And I think it's really uh, quite amazing. So uh, I know you go out into the wild a lot. You were telling me about all the different places you go to, and I was kind of wondering if you've ever like. Ever sort of been attacked by an animal ever, you know, in the wild or they anything? They are super cute, though. I yeah, mean, I know. That I, I don't think that. Have I've you ever, ever seen these before? These are called feisty pets. Feisty pets. Yeah, take a look right into his eyes. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> that wasn't at all what I expected. <laughs> Holy moly! Yeah. So if you just grab the oh back of his head and uh, squeeze, he kind of oh changes from gosh. adorable to uh, pretty. Pretty this scary. Is, this is freaking awesome, man. Yeah. I am telling you what, like that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I even uh, have a, a little cat here, one that kind of <laughs> does the same thing. So, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. I, I love I, everything I've seen of your stuff, whether it's been online or here, has been amazing. But uh, this is my favorite. Cool. I, I'm glad you like it. I mean, that is that is freaking awesome. Yeah. That is what nightmares are made of, right there. <laughs> How are you feeling today? I mean, you feeling pretty. Pretty sure you like brave and full of energy. Because me and you are going to do yeah, something together. Yeah, I know. I know you do. So I had to at least, you know, oh, listen. Oh, dude. You know, <laughs> listen. I, you know, I, I always preach to people about getting over the fears. I talk about knowledge, about education, and everyone knows that watches me that I'm fearful of spiders. You know, and, and I've gotten way, way better. So I can't come here and at least not bring. The thing that I'm probably, you know, I can't, it wouldn't be right for me to come here and bring a bunch of snakes when other people are like, oh my God, that's kind of freaky. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I'm not going to put myself under fire. So, uh -huh. so here we go. Here's a tarantula. You're just going to take it out? Yeah. <sighs> this is, uh, this tarantula is named Queen Elizabeth. And, oh, come on, Queen Elizabeth. I'm not so good at picking them up, but once they're up, I'm okay. So this is Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> come on, girl. Oh, dude. Okay. Whoa. Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing so good. <laughs> That's not so good. So this is Queen Elizabeth. This uh -huh. is a, a Mexican red new tarantula. And, and really, you don't have to hold. I mean, just like being this close. I'm just, I'm really taking, I'm, I'm slowly. <laughs> it's pretty freaky, isn't it? I mean, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll admit, you know, it's definitely I'm, a little I'm taking, I'm taking it all in. Where does it strike from? <laughs> like, <where? laughs> well, fortunately, these guys are pretty slow moving. They don't jump. They're kind of chill. And, and literally, like, I can just kind of. But they're definitely predators. I mean, so. Well, yeah, they're, they're insectivores. So they're going to, you know, I mean, they will eat little rodents and, and little lizards and stuff like uh -huh. that in the wild but but for the most part they're going to eat bugs and, and they do have two pretty good sized fangs in the very front right here 
you know, uh, but they, they really, you know, these, this particular species, uh, which is a smith eye, is really known that it doesn't ever really bite, you know, so, so they're really good. And, and as you can see, I, I'm telling you what, a This year shows how little, I'm s sorry, uh, spiders have eight legs, right? That's correct. I, I'm counting ten things. <laughs> okay, yeah, these are actually not legs up here, and what they'll do is males will believe it, and this is a female, by the way, males will actually lock these together when they're, they're combating, as well as the fact that the male and female will lock them together when they're breeding. And, um, and, and so, yeah, there's only, these are the four legs right. right here, and then these guys are actually not legs. You know, I felt like if I could get around spiders enough, that it you would, could touch it, would, it. You know, yeah. if, you, if you want, you could just touch it right on the back, she's completely fine. Uh -huh. And it's actually really, you know, it's very soft, it's furry. It's very right, animal. right. You're doing great. You know, but the thing is, is that when you get around animals that maybe, you know, really bothered you, and were really fearful of whether it be snakes or spiders mm -hmm. or anything like that, if you're around them enough, all of a sudden you become very comfortable. Right. Literally, two years ago, I would have probably been passed out right now. <laughs> Legitimately <laughs> passed out. And, and here I am, just completely calm, not at uh -huh. all concerned whatsoever. So, yeah. uh, so she's a great ambassador. You want to give okay. her a shot? I wanted to, I want, I wanted to all right, so let me tell you what's maybe. going on here. Okay. I'm going to get her into a little bit how, better position. How can I so, ensure so I don't freak it out? Just oh. don't move, and it won't do anything to you. Okay. Okay, it just, just like stay still. Oh, dude. See that? Yeah. And if you just let it crawl, it's going to be completely fine. Ha, okay. Is that awesome? No, yeah, I mean, sort of. <laughs> ah, <laughs> dude. Okay, we'll get it, we'll get it. Okay, and that, see, that's ah, good, man. You did phenomenal. I'm sweating, man. Dude, mm. you did so good. I would have never been able to do that for the first time. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's and, very, I will be, it's very soft. It is, right? It's all in the head, man. I'm it's thinking the way it's they just move yeah. and that, that weirdness, but uh, but they're absolutely cool. So listen, I mean this has just been amazing. Ooh. The whole day has been awesome. Thank you for yeah. letting me enter to your world and, and uh, we had a great time with your video and thank you for uh, you know letting me see your awesome stuff and yeah. teach you about the things that I'm passionate about. That's really cool. Thanks so much for bringing all these amazing animals. It's probably Way cooler than some of the stuff we sell, but no, I appreciate I you letting so. me show it to you anyways. Um, but this kind of, that's amazing. That was a These great These are experience. amazing animals. And yeah. that's the thing you can, you know, you can tell people now, like, oh my God, I held this cool tarantula. Yeah. So, but guys, you know, do me a favor. Make sure to subscribe to VAT19. They have amazing stuff. You can check out their website for their cool products and watch their cool videos. And as always, I'm Facebook and tweet my way through things. So make sure to follow me over at Snakebites TV and on Instagram at Snakebites TV. I'll put all the links in the description. I'll see you guys next week.